Okay, so today we're exploring division. Uh, and I say division, I, I use one word, but I'm actually talking about lots of different thought processes. So different division questions you answer in, in very different ways. So we're going to have a look at how one question might be different than another in the thought process that you use. Now to do that, I'm going to take you back on a journey through the kinds of experiences that you probably had to help you to understand division in, in, the, in the past and how they can all be useful now. They tie into these different thought processes. So we're going to get straight into it and I hope it's going to be really, really helpful. The other thing we're going to do is look at some of the division questions that you'll get to answer in the future. So the very first thing we're going to do is go back to one of the tasks you were given yesterday and to a question that Holly's written and sent in. So again, thank you so much, Holly. Loved, loved this one. So I think of two numbers. When I add my numbers together, I get 23. When I multiply my numbers, I get more than 120. What could my numbers be? So your first challenge is pause the video. Well, that's not really your first challenge isn't to pause the video. It's more to do the task. But anyway, pause the video. Can you find an answer? Can you find different answers? I wonder, can you find all the answers that there, that there are? Have a go. Okay, let's have a little look. I, I wonder what you saw. I wonder what you found. Um, so Holly has given uh, some answers as well, the different answers and interesting ones here. So uh, 11 plus 12 will be the largest product we can get um, with two numbers that add to make 23. And then a slightly smaller product. And we, we explained, of course, why yesterday. 10 and 13. So 10 and 13 make 23. When they're multiplied, then we get to 130. Um, 9 and 14 is 23, 9 multiplied by 14, 126, and then I can't have 8 and 15 because um, 8 times 15 equals 120, um, and we've got, it's more, it's got to be more than 120. So I, I thought this was a brilliantly designed question from Holly. Uh, well done, Holly. I know there's other examples that are being sent through, and we'll try and build them into to future videos as well. Now today, I've called today's video Division Time Travel, because again, we're going to go on a look back at some of the things you've learned in Division and look at how some of the strategies you use today rely on those earlier experiences and, and how Division can be so different from one question to another. So one of the first experiences you might have had might have been something like this. Share eight sweets. It might have been between you and a friend. So let's say you might have done one for me, one for you. And believe me, it's always one for me first when we're working with children and sweets. One for me, one for you. One for me, one for you. One for me, one for you. And then what's the answer when we share eight sweets between two people? Well, it's how many each person has. Uh, that is, of course, four. Now, you use a very similar thought process in some situations, not many, but some now. So let's say if you're doing 80 divided by 2, you wouldn't be thinking how many 2s in 80. You'd probably just think, well, 80, let's split into two equal groups. And of course, there would be 40 in each group. But a lot of division actually relies on a different thought process. So when you're doing 36 divided by 9, I don't think you're thinking, right, imagine 36 in 9 groups. Your understanding is more built on an array or an area model here. So here we have nine and how many lots of nine? We've got four lots of nine. So four nines are 36. In division then, I'd be thinking, well, how many nines in 36? I can use that inverse fact. How many nines in 36? One, two, three, four. Uh, so the answer is four. And I use my understanding of multiplication and that division is an inverse there. Now, for a question like 19 divided by 6, you'll have a similar thought process. How many 6s in 19 uh, is, is how we come to learn that. And what the we're doing on the Lower Key Stage 2 video today, and one of my favourite ways of showing this, is saying, well, how many hexagons could you make with 19 matchsticks? And I want the children to think, well, I'd be able to make three and there'd be one left over. And we'll develop that to see how many 6s in 19 was three full sixes and the uh, remainder is one. Now they're all very different thought processes because I can't just dig out my times table fact for how many sixes in 19 because of course it, um, 19 isn't a, uh, isn't a multiple of six. 
And then we need to move to this extra skill as well. So let's say 52 divided by 4. Now we're, we're in a number range where you might just not know the times table that you're using. Um, so, um, so 4 um, is a factor of 52, but I not, might not know immediately how many 4s in 52. Like here, I could count them all. But then we also have to get this step of, well, I can break that 52 down into pieces where, which 4 will go into. So I could think, well, four, uh, there's 10 4s in 40. I know there's 3 4s in 12. So if I split up my 52 into 40 and 12, I can work out how many 4s in 52 in total. It must be 13. So these are the pieces of understanding that, that division are built on. Now, I want you to have a look at these questions, and I've called them different ways questions. Now, basically, what I want you to do is work out the answer to each question. But I think you'll use different strategies to work out the answers to each question. So for some of them, you might think, oh, for this one, I'll use this technique. Whereas you might think, actually, for that one, I might use a written method. Um, but what I want you to do is pause the video, find as many answers as you can, um, and then think, how is the method that I used different from question to question? OK, well, should we have a little look? Um, now, 140 divided by 10. Here, I would actually just use this rule that I know for moving the digits into different columns. Uh, that 140 is, is 100. Four tens, if I divide by 10, I know I need to shift the digits. Um, so that becomes one ten and four ones is 14. So that's actually different to what we've described so far. If I was doing 140 divided by seven, I might just think, well, how many sevens are in 140? I can use my times table knowledge. How many sevens in 14? There's two. So how many sevens in 140? It must be 20. 20 times seven is 140. But if I'm doing 140 divided by 6, I'm likely actually to use a written method all of a sudden. Because I'm unlikely to know how many 6s are in 140. And for, it's 23 remainder 2. Now I know we can give our remainders as fractions. We're not going to focus on that today. Whereas this one might look the most difficult. How many 35s in 140? What's 140 divided by 35? Actually, it's, it's just 4. If I count up in 35s, 35, 70, and then another two lots of 35. That means I've got four lots of 35 and, and 140. So they're quite different in my approaches there. Now, I always remember giving some children in my year six class this question and then really puzzling over it and thinking, well, 10.5 divided by 3.5. Wow, that's a difficult question. Until we realise what, what we're just trying to calculate is, well, how many 3.5s are there in 10.5? And just count up in 3.5s. And then we might recognise, actually, the answer is just 3. And equally, this might be something that you'll come to in the future, is questions like 4 divided by a half. And really, it's just developing this understanding. How many halves in 4? So if I count up in halves, how many will I need to get to 4? Of course, it's 8. So, so that's something that we might eventually get to. Now, to finish with, I, I want you to have a look at these four questions. Um, and I've said rank by difficulty. So I want you to have a go, calculate the answer if you can. But then which question do you think was the easiest? Which was the hardest and why? <clears throat> and I want you to think about the different strategies that you used. Pause the video and have a go. OK, now as ever, of course, I can't tell you which is the most difficult or which is the easiest, but I could talk through different possible strategies. So 144 divided by 8, it could well be as a, a written method used here um, for this one. Or, or equally, I, I, it's possible to think, well, 8 times 20 is 160 and then think that that's too many lots of 8 and kind of count backwards. But I, a lot, I think it would be common to use a written method for a question like that one. Now, for 144 divided by 72, how many 72s in 144? Well, there are two. This one might seem like the hardest question because I'm dividing by a two-digit number, though, of course. 144 divided by 10. Because I'm dividing by 10, I can use this, this rule of how I move the digits um, to make it 14.4. And what about 144 divided by 7? 
Well, I might know that 7 times 20 equals 140, and so that must mean that it will be 20 remainder 4. Now, again, we can give that as a fraction, 20 and 4 sevenths. Um, but you can see there, very different ways of seeing these different calculations. Well, now it's your turn to apply that understanding. Have a go here at uh, task A or task B. I'll, I'll talk about the extend task in a second. Um, so for task A and B, the key thing is here about thinking about the different methods that are used to answer each question. Um, so have a go at actually answering the questions and then think, how are the thought processes different? So I've written here some what I call sentence stems. You might be able to say something like, well, I answered 320 divided by 8 with a and then did use a written or a mental method because, and you could talk about those differences in the strategies. So before you calculate, think, well, what will work for this question in particular? Now on the video, we haven't looked at the I know and so strategy. So, but I thought I'd, I'd just give you a little go. And again, don't worry if you find it hard to access these tasks, but be very interested if, if anyone does manage to understand the links here. So I've got a, a division fact at the top. How can you use this division fact, like 100 divided by five equals 20? to work out the answer to another division calculation, like 115 divided by 5. Um, so see if you can apply the understanding that we've built in this video to, to do that. Um, you might want to have a go at task B, a little bit more challenge in the calculations involved there. Now for the extend task, I would love you to design a sequence of questions of I know and so for used using division calculations. So start a little bit like I have here with one division fact and then see if you can come up with three or four um, division calculation facts that link in, in their understanding to, to one another. I, I would love to use them, of, of course, in future videos. Um, as ever, I'm sure you know this, there are answers at the bottom and of course, I'll be back tomorrow and we'll go even deeper. I will look forward to it.